I'd like to point out by, or start out by pointing out the fact that I've spoken at like seven conferences now, and you can add up all those people, put them in this room, and there's still not as many people as I've spoken before as have come to see my daughter, so I appreciate that. Uh, I will kick off this, and then she's going to hit the whole middle section, and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. But basically, uh, this is me. I'm just a pajama-wearing hipster. I like drinking hot cocoa in the winter and talking about health care with my family. Uh, I'm an average InfoSec analyst. Uh, it pays well, though, and it supports my habit of shooting. I love shooting. Throwing lead down range is very expensive. Okay, so I'm pretty much just a photographer, and I'm 14 years old, so most people consider me a kid, yes. especially him, because why not? Um, I have, oh, sorry, I have a sister and a brother named Audrey and Isaac, and they are nuts, but I love them very much, and I'm a Christian just like my dad. So by 14, by the way, she turned 14 two weeks ago, so I still consider her 13. She is a kid. So what this talk is not, it's not groundbreaking. There's nothing that we've really developed or come up with on our own. Uh, to be honest with you, we basically stole it from World Possible and Hackers for Charity. So they did all the groundwork for us. They really deserve all the credit. We just kind of bought the pieces, put it together, and she deployed this in Africa. Uh, what this is, well, we homeschool, so we have to come up with our own curriculum. And whenever it comes to science and math and things of that nature, my wife is not exactly a scientific or mathematician type person. She's very good at addition and subtraction, but uh, the rest of it I have to come up with. So um, basically it was, it was bonding for us. I don't get to see my daughter a lot, so it's what we do. Um, and it's a call to serve. Uh, this kid has been wanting to go to Africa since she was about three. We finally let her, let her go whenever she was 13. So pretty much just to shut her up. Yeah. So a little bit of background. This is kind of the history of what happened. Uh, whenever she was five years old, she actually had her second camera. At the age of three, we bought her a little Barbie camera, took 12 pictures, that was it. And I knew I was in trouble whenever she would take 12 pictures of the same object from different angles. And she would always study the light and how it affected the, the, you know, the camera or the photo. So I figured that was going to expand in the future. Uh, in 2006, my in-laws, like all of them, went to Kenya on a medical mission trip. And that's kind of where they got the bug. So this is actually, uh, they, it was the Maasai tribe in the Rift Valley area. And um, they absolutely loved it. They decided they would go back. Um, Whenever they came home with all the stories, that's whenever Emily really started getting on us. She was six years old at this time. So we just had to set a rule because of the shots. We decided we wanted her to be 13. She doesn't know it, but it was actually arbitrary. But yeah, all right. So apparently she didn't know. So in 2012, my mother-in-law went back to Kenya and helped establish a clinic, a medical clinic. This lady is Grace, um, the one that doesn't look like me. and. Um, Basically, she failed out of medical school. What that means is she got a B, so her dad stopped paying. So my in-laws decided they would pay for her, and rather than have her pay them back, she would have to put someone else through medical school. So she's actually put two doctors through and, and a nurse, right? Yeah, and then there's one actively in. Then there's one actively in. She's paying their way right now. So this is really all about paying it forward. Uh, let's see, 2012... Once again, my mother-in-law goes at least every six months, which I think is crazy, but like I said, she feels it's, it's her call. It's what she's supposed to be doing, so she does it. Uh, basically, in 2012, they adopted a school. Now, if you're in Nairobi, Kenya, and you just drive a mile and a, or an hour and a half south, in the middle of nowhere, there's all of a sudden a school. So they adopted the school, 218 children, and there's some of the children. Uh, this year... Uh, we adopted an orphanage. And this orphanage is actually a homeschool also. In Kenya, it's very expensive to send somebody to school. You have to buy uniforms, you have to buy everything for them. So if you don't have sponsorship, really, you can't go to school. So this lady that started this orphanage was actually a school teacher, retired. So she homeschools. 
Uh, this year was whenever my daughter came to me and said, I will be an artist, I will be a photographer. So I, being a technology guy, knowing nothing about art, panicked. And I wanted to re-divert her attention into something that could pay the bills and maybe have this as a hobby. She's good enough to where it's, it's not going to be a hobby. And that's not just because I'm a dad. Okay. So the plan was we were going to build a server, and then we're going to build the Rachel Pie, but yeah. And then we're going to install a, a Windows 7 on a ThinkPad. We're going to install Linux using Crouton um, on an Acer Chromebook. This little silver one it's, didn't work. <laughs> um, we're going to go to Kenya. Uh, install the software, teach the staff, and then it would be a big learning thing. So I want to start this slide off by apologizing to Sam, Sam Kinch. Um, I think I've spoken to him so much about this that he was going to take out a restraining order against me. Every conference we ever went to together, I was like on his hip saying, Sam, what do you have for me? What can you give me? What can you do? And he's like, dude, seriously, I've got all of it. I'll give it to you. Just, it's going to take time. I'm building these things while I'm writing it down. So, apologize, Sam. Okay. So, how it actually happened is that. And then we bought the Rachel Pie and then built the server. Then we pretty much tried to download the Rachel Pie stuff, but... It was kind of already downloaded a little bit. And so we spent like five hours trying to get it to work, and it wouldn't work. It was Dad's fault. Yeah, it was I forgot fault. to format the SD card. Yeah. And so for like five hours, we sat there trying to figure this thing out. And then he's like, wait a second. I should probably see if I did that. And he hadn't. So we went to Kenya, and then we built them this big uh, school made out of sheet metal which and wood which is like really nice in Kenya for yeah and then we installed the Rachel Pie and then we taught our friend Salome who works at the hotel we stay at and she goes out there a lot to help and so we saw we taught her because there was no electricity okay. So we started off by ordering the parts, and if you've never done this before, you can go to worldpossible.com or hackersforcharity.org, and they have the parts list there and a step-by-step -step procedure on how to do it. Our budget, Emily raised over $1,000 to do this. She dedicated $100 of that money for this particular part of the project, and I think $81 was the total. So she came under her budget. It would have actually been uh, $80, but I had to purchase two Wi-Fi dongles, because the first one I tried to go to the cheap route and save a dollar, and you'll see later it kind of kicked me in the butt. Then we built this, a case. We had got two originally, one for watching TV and one for the school, and then the one for the school, we kind of made a case out of Legos for, and it's really awesome, if I do fun. say so myself. Oh, yeah. I have the link to this step-by-step -step procedure on how to do that. This guy created it in Lego CAD. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It rocks. And this is me building the Rachel Pie. And yes, we brought down my parents' TV and did it on that because that's apparently what we do. I don't have a monitor anymore. It's all laptops. So I had to steal the TV and um, relocate it for a little while. Then we installed it on the computer, the laptops, and I'm being bored because that's whenever he kind of messed it up with the <laughs> SD card. Two different things happened. Number one is for the Rachel Pie. Like I said, I forgot to format the SD card. Bad on me. And then the other one is um, she had never installed an operating system of any type. So whenever Windows 7, you know, all the click-throughs, uh, this is basically her. Um, at this point, it was like 10 minutes into it, and she was already getting angry, asking me how I could ever have been a system administrator. And, yeah, and I made her push through. We also installed Crouton on the, uh, the, the Chromebook. The purpose for that was to install Linux, and that's the easiest way to, to do that. It really is simple. It's, it's click. 
We ended up not leaving Linux on there uh, because of the screen that pops up for developer mode, and it looks more like an error page, and we were afraid that the people we gave it over to would probably kind of freak out the first time they saw that and think they broke it and not use it. And then we just gathered it all together and went to Kenya, finally, after like 15 years or whatever. A couple of the first pictures she took on her trip to Africa was one was of a barf bag. It was awesome. And then, of course, clouds. She had like 30 pictures of clouds. So. Sure, that's awesome. And then we built the school. So these are pictures. That's what they wanted it to look like. That's like a high-scale building in Kenya. This is actually where all the boys sleep, so that's kind of sad. Yeah, that's where the boys sleep. And I think that's my mom and Aunt Rachel. They're building the school, and they had never seen the way we did it before. They were like, you build the walls on the ground and push it up, because they were used to like using these weird ladders, and I don't even know how. <laughs> um, and pushing up the wall, and then inside the completed wall. These were, this is kind of another side story. These were day laborers, the, the guys in front. Um, whenever we tried to pay them, we asked how much was acceptable, and they told us a dollar a day. So my wife's grandfather who went was like, that's not happening, I'm gonna give them more. And the lady pulled him aside and said, that will totally wreck the economy if, if you just do that. So we gave them $2 a day, which is still sad. And then that's the completed school. And they thought it was so nice. They decided they weren't gonna use it for a school. They were gonna use it for the girls to sleep in because before then they had been sleeping literally in the living room on mattresses on the floor. And so they decided they were going to put all the mattresses in there and have school in the living room. And yeah, this is me making sure it worked. And there was no power because they had just moved in. And the, the previous house that they had had, they just moved to this, this house. The previous house had power. So we went into it thinking they're gonna have power. Yeah. Well, then they moved on us, literally in the last couple of months. So they had no power. And then we remembered that George, our guide, had some power in the van. And so we went to the van. But unfortunately, they use English. Uh, plugs and we didn't have an adapter so we had to hold it in the entire time and of course it didn't work yeah. the, the power in the van was a little bit too unstable so it, it wouldn't work and one of the things that I had noticed was whenever she was putting it all together actually my wife was coaching her on how to do it which was a mistake uh, basically she had her plug it, the power in first and then put the SD card in so we're just thankful that it didn't just stop And then we sent an email to tech support, also known as my dad, but he made us put tech support because he's weird like that. And he emailed us back with the list of things we had done wrong. Yeah, basically the, the two real steps that are involved. Um, we just switched them up, but it didn't work. Yeah. And that's Salome, and that's who we taught. And because we didn't have time to go back and plug it in, but it was really easy, like literally three steps to turn it on. So we just taught Salome and she goes out there a lot and she fixed it for him. If you've never experienced the Rachel Pye software, basically uh, there's a lot of Khan Academy stuff on there. There's Wikipedia stuff on there. Uh, one of the big things that the orphanage owner <coughs> really loved was the medical information. And we're talking basic medical things like wash your hands. Don't wash your... Uh, plates in the same water that you, you know, pee next to, that, that kind of thing. So she really, uh, because a lot of times the, the, some of the people out there, they don't know any better because they've just never been told. It's what they've been doing for years. So whenever she saw this in writing, she was like, finally, I can explain to these people that we're doing this wrong. So she really loved that part of it. And then we went on safari and saw a bunch of giraffes which are like the most awesome animal ever. If you can see, I brought my giraffe because it's amazing. And that's a leopard, which we saw on our first day. And apparently it didn't happen because they're super rare, but we ended up seeing two, 
on the first day. And that's the sun. And just in case you're wondering, that giant, it actually is that big whenever it rises. That's actually it. And then, of course, she spoke here. Um, so the last couple of slides are lessons learned. Once again, all the times I talked to Sam, um, you know, you kind of get an idea, but you really don't. And even whenever I talk to Johnny Long, you get an idea, but you don't. So whenever you get on ground, boots, boots on the ground, okay. Whenever you get on ground, things are different. Um, number one, well, lessons learned, number one, Rachel Pies are really easy to build. If you've never built one, everything, like I said, is done for you. Where you start screwing it up is where you think you can get by on things and buy the wrong, you know, Wi-Fi adapter uh, because you want to save a dollar. And then the drivers aren't loaded. And then you have to worry about loading drivers from command line, which I may have a Mac up here that I use, but I'm not a command line guy. I can tell you a long story about Unix and Sun OS back in the day and why I refuse to, to, to touch any Nix variant. And unfortunately, here I am again. He still knows like way more than me. Like he tried to teach me three commands. I forgot them already. MD5 is one of the commands I tried to teach her. Uh, she wants to be an artist, did I say that? So uh, if the maker recommends a part, buy that part, save yourself. World Possible said, use one of these two Wi-Fi dongles, and I used mine that worked on my XBMC server, but it didn't work on the Rachel Pi, and it cost me five hours. Uh, I always recommend the 1.5 amp power supply, just because those Wi-Fi dongles can suck down a lot of power. If you can get away with it, use it. Uh, you only have to have a one amp, I believe it is, power supply. But just with the components that we use, it seemed to work better. More lessons learned. Um, Rachel Pye doesn't like dirty power. Uh, whenever we were in the van, she couldn't get it to work at all. As soon as we got to the hotel, or she got to the hotel, then it seemed to work fine. Um, have a backup plan. It, just in case we, we had a partial backup plan. If the Rachel Pie didn't work because of Wi-Fi, I gave her a Cat5 cable, showed her how to use that. It's really simple, you just plug in a computer, you're done. Or plug in a, a router and you're done. Um, what we didn't have a backup plan on was what happens if the Rachel Pie goes down. The S, there's no power button. So the, uh, anytime you pull out power, it does just a, a dirty shutdown, right? It just, power's gone. It's Linux-based, so it's gonna crash in a matter of time. I wanted to put uh, the Khan Academy or Ka Lite on the laptops. We just didn't have enough time to do it, so that was kind of my failure. And then Linux was really too difficult for the end users to use. Just the simple keystrokes of getting from one OS on, on the Chromebook to another one. Uh, so we just kind of nixed that and, and did away with it. So what's next? Uh, they're gonna install power in the house in the next couple of months, which is gonna be really good. Uh, Emily's gonna use the rest of the money that she raised to buy a really good generator for them as a backup. Uh, provide more computers to the kids. It's kind of something that we're hoping for. There's 28 kids, 20 29 of them, now. 29 now. They showed up with a little baby whenever the day they were leaving. So one day old baby. Uh, Pelican pie, Johnny, can you come on up and bring your Pelican pie? Um, this is something we kind of want to want to do in the future if it's possible and hopefully we can go back this summer So I don't want to steal their thunder. So before I get started, let's give these guys a big hand because I think it's really cool. So the pain and suffering that uh, Brandon and Emily kind of went through is something that we've seen in the field with Hackers for Charity um, You know all the problems that they ran into made us realize that there's a huge need for something portable that you can put into a classroom that is in a rugged environment with lots of dirt, dirty power, um, you know, uh, all of these things that they kind of ran into, we've run into before. And parallel to these guys going through the pain and suffering of learning all this stuff, we were going through it at the same time. 
and you know, bouncing ideas off each other and things. And for those of you that haven't seen it, this is the Pelican Pie. This is kind of the evolution of what these guys did. Um, and basically this solves the power problem uh, in that it's solar chargeable. Uh, it also works on 110, 220. It's got a 24 hour battery that can run this thing when the power's you know, supposed to be there, but it's not. And basically this is the portable server that they were, that they were talking about. Okay, so for those of you that might be interested in doing something like this, um, but don't want to go through the pain and suffering, you know, and trying to figure it all out on your own, or you don't want to figure it all out and then get there and realize, oh, I, you know, forgot something. These kits are available for you guys to kind of go with and deploy on your own. Um, all the software that these guys talked about is available here on Wi-Fi. So those of you that are in the room right now are going to see a Rachel access point. If you want to see the educational content that they're seeing, you can connect to the Wi-Fi now or stop by our booth. Um, but I just want to uh, congratulate these guys for actually doing it, you know, going somewhere that, that didn't have, uh, you know, didn't have an educational system, didn't have curriculum, didn't have computers, and they basically deployed it. So what they did was really awesome and just want to really encourage anybody else that's interested in it, talk to these guys. It's, it's really a life-changing experience. So again, thank you guys so much. Just letting you know, my dad didn't actually go with me to Africa. He stayed and watched my sister and brother, Audrey and Isaac, which is in itself kind of like a scary experience. Yes, amen to that. <laughs> so uh, once again, we didn't come up with any of this ourselves. Uh, here's all this, the websites that, that we used. Uh, it's not a lot. MCM is where we bought our, our Raspberry Pi from. They're from Ohio. They could get it to us the quickest. They're right across the river. We're in Kentucky, so. So that's basically it. Are there any questions? All right. We'll be here all weekend. Uh, I'll be frequenting the HFC booth. So feel free to come by, ask us questions, ask these guys questions. Um, they've been doing it a lot longer than I have, so I will probably just smile and point their way. So uh, thank you.